And uh, Robin, we'll start with you. What do you think overall for this card? Will this be a big buys pay per view? You know, it, it depends how the primetime show reaches people. I think, but and it's obviously a drag that uh, Overeem is out, man. Like, don't you like seeing you know the Hulk fight? Really? <laughs> yeah. Like the Dark Hulk. And uh, actually, speaking to him, I just saw some uh, shots of him online today, and he is, looks a lot smaller. Like once you start to figure out how to work that gas. You know how to not be t- consuming as much supplements as he's consuming. You kind of stabilize somewhere around superhuman. So. But, uh, yeah, it's a good-looking card. I mean, when you got the heavyweight title up and you got Frank Mir, who's a great talker, you know, you got a bit of a storyline because he broke Dos Santos' uh, teammate's arm. You got Velasquez back in action. I think it's a good one. I think a lot of people will dig it. I'm, I can't wait to see it. All right, Stevie? Yeah, I'm totally excited about this card. It's kind of ironic that it follows the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. We get one card that's focused around a heavyweight, and then we get another card that's almost all heavyweights. Hey, let the speculation begin on who Daniel Cormier is going to face from this card. And that was a great uh, main event. Uh, in the first round, both fighters broke one of their hands <laughs> on each other's skulls, but uh, it was a good fight, five rounds, and uh, Cormier did, in fact, win the Grand Prix, and we'll see him f- probably fight once or twice more in Strike Force before making the jump. And we do know that Barnett also will have another fight in Strike Force as well. But uh, Dos Santos and Mir, Dos Santos, he. Uh, he started the trash talk, and then he quickly denied it, saying, no, no, it's not what I meant, but he's questioning the heart of Frank Mir. Uh, Robin, what do you think of the trash talk this week? Uh, you know what? We were on um, uh, Fight Network. We were on that call, that UFC uh, uh, call, press call, and uh, so they come out and they say uh, that uh, – uh, Junior Dos Santos has been talking stuff, and and they ask Frank Mir, and he goes, yeah, you know, I understand that people just say that. And then Dos Santos, his translator, comes on and goes, I'm sorry, I would just like to interrupt. Uh, I just spoke with Junior, and he says that he did not mean to trash talk, and he uh, he would never do that to another man. He sincerely, truly believes that Frank Mir has no heart. It is not, not trash talk at all. And I just thought that was absolutely priceless, like this well-spoken translator just going, no, no, he meant no disrespect. He truly believes that Frank Mir has no heart. So right. it's classic. We have Frank Mir at number three of career knockdowns landed. Number one of individual fight knockdowns landed, which is three. I actually don't know which fight that was. Uh, and on and on. I mean, you look at it, and on paper, uh, Frank Mir is, at least on paper, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time in the UFC. No now, question. You, now, I mean, he talks a lot of nonsense, and you look online, and you see guys giving anywhere from a, a plus 300 to a plus 600, like crazy stats. But, you know, we've all kind of got caught up in this idea that Dos Santos will just run through Frank Mir, but the numbers tell a different story. Absolutely, and do you think Frank Mir, you see all these different stats, and the one thing I love seeing on his stat sheet, he's the first and only toehold finish in UFC history. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, a, a toll is incredibly hard to finish because it's really for the most, the average person, it's just pain. And people don't tap to pain. They tap to the physics of damage to a, to a joint. But uh, when a guy, when Frank Mir gets a hold of your toe, it's not pain. He's going to wreck your foot forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you'll be walking funny for a week at least. Yeah. Well, for a long time. Oh, but, man. You know, I don't think we should underestimate Frank Mir. I think the tendency in people is saying, oh, he's got no chance. I was in Fight Network today, and a couple of guys in the office are saying he literally has no chance. And I just, I just don't think that's true. I totally agree with you. I've been saying this for a while now that Frank Mir has proven himself over and over again when people said, oh, that guy is just going to get smashed. What kind of chance does he have? He's going to get submitted. I mean, he tapped out Brock Lesnar. He submitted Nogueira. I mean, how, how many more top-ranked guys does Frank Mir have to beat before people will finally say, yeah, he's legit. He's got a good shot. I don't know, man. Now, one thing I want to bring up is that when Overeem got pulled from this card, it took all of, what, 10 minutes for Frank Mir to put out a press release saying, I want this fight? I mean, it was either going to be him or Cain Velasquez. I think Cain sat back and relaxed, like, eh, if it give it to me, I'll take it, but I'm not pushing for it. And Mir's like, gimme, 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 I want this fight. He yeah. knows. <laughs> it's true. But see, here's the thing. When Velasquez defended his title against Dos Santos at UFC on Fox 1, 
everybody knew that Velasquez was seriously injured. Even the bookmakers, like the rumors coming out of his camp was that he was injured. His knee was injured so badly that he couldn't train on it. And on any other occasion, he would have pulled out of the fight. But it was on Fox. It was it was promoted. He literally took a bullet for, for the company. And fought Junior Dos Santos with one leg. So Velasquez is in no hurry to get back there. You can go in there. You can knock out Antonio Silva. You can add another 10 or 14 weeks to your training and then go back and try to get your title back. I, In my opinion, the fight I'm most interested to see is Velasquez. And in my opinion, he's still the number one guy. I mean, he's he lost to nobody except for Dos Santos on one leg. I mean, we you, you can't get off the Velasquez train just because of that. I thought it was Dos Santos that had torn meniscus. Yeah, he came out afterwards because the story, you know, the Velasquez never came out. Okay. It was all coming out of AKA. It was all sort of internal. And we've got, you know, a lot of people at different levels end up having these conversations. I got a buddy in Winnipeg who is a guy who gets consulted by some of the bookmakers. I got different people like that that talk. And the, the word out was that Velasquez had a severely injured knee, never came out and talked about it, would have would have pulled out of the fight if it wasn't so important to the UFC. Mm-hmm. You know? And Dos Santos, on the other hand, pr- you know, presumably heard all those stories and said, hey, man, I was hurt too, you know? Now let's uh, let's talk about that semi main event with Kane Velasquez. He'll be facing uh, Bigfoot Silva, and that's another great fight. And some are saying, I don't know, I'm sure this is confirmed or not, but this sounds to me like a number one contenders fight. Absolutely fantastic fight. I don't know if I consider it a number one contender fight for both men. It might be more for one than the other. It's really, in my mind, more if Velasquez wins, you give him that rematch. You can sell that. It was watched by so many people. People are familiar with both guys because of that Fox show. You can sell that fight. Silva, he'd have to have an incredible performance. And again, let's not rule out that Frank Mir wins the heavyweight title. And I'm kind of sm- snickering when I say that, but he does have a, a chance to win it. There's no question. Now, uh, let's just keep on going with this card. And another one, Roy Nelson against Dave Peavy Herman. Uh... Um, you know, you make a good point about jiu-jitsu, man. We got used to Roy, Roy Nelson waddling around in the cage with that huge belly, just throwing giant overhead right sledgehammers and having a crazy chin. That's really what he's been in the UFC. But Roy Nelson is an elite-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter, elite-level submission fighter. So maybe against Dave Herman, you need to win badly, throw a few punches, take him to the ground, and try to finish things off that way. And I wouldn't mind seeing it. I mean, Roy Nelson's a guy we love. He's got a goofy mullet. He likes to eat burgers, although he's lost some weight. Um, he's he's interesting. He's different. And, I mean, I think the UFC right now really needs different. Do we need another chiseled athlete who says, I'd like to thank my corner, and I feel real blessed to be here, and I want to thank the fans? No. You know? And the thing is, like, Roy Nelson, he's lost three of his last four. But look who he's got beat by, Verdum, Frank Mir, and JDS. I mean, it's a who's who. It's the top of the division. Yep, That's sure. true. But at the same... Oh, so, go ahead, Robin. Uh, which is almost really why you get a Dave Herman fight. It's like, hey, hey man, you, you've really come through for us. Here's a guy. I'm not taking anything away from Dave Herman. But Dave Herman isn't among those three. So here you get a guy who isn't at that level, and Dave Herman gets a chance to put himself at that level. It's a good fight. It's a good matchup. Absolutely. Yeah. And and for Roy Nelson, there really can't be any excuses because you're right. He's faced top level guys. But at the same time, you can't sooner or later, you got to win the fights. You know, it, yeah. it it doesn't matter if you're facing the cream of the crop. You got to you know, he's beaten tough guys before. So he's got to start beating some guys again. Your your appearance was supposed to be last. Uh, your last fight was supposed to be here in Ottawa for Rec MMA at the Casino Lac Limi. And your opponent pulled out last minute and Every source I find, it's different. I mean, I yeah. either hear that he pulled out because he wouldn't do a medical test or he wasn't taking his meds. Another one said uh, there were concerns uh, over doing serious harm to Robin due to his recent exposure to Sensei Dux's more secretive techniques <laughs> to – what was the best one I read? It was uh, – Actually, it's on your your Wikipedia. I'm just going to quote it verbatim. Mero was unable to meet the medical requirement due to a recently diagnosed case of aphrophosmobia, which is a fear of being touched. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, here, here's the thing. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I think I've turned into a reasonably half decent color commentator, and I'm not a bad MMA analyst. I've worked really hard at it. As a fighter, I'd be lucky to be not bad, but I really love it, and I work really hard. And I'm passionate about it. I'm 42 years old. I came back from tumors on my thyroid gland. I want to fight one more time. And this is the guy who beat me. He's not very good. He's not doesn't fight, train real MMA. 
that doesn't mean he can't beat me. You know, he comes from a karate school and he trains with Frank Dukes. And anyone who knows, I'm not going to say anything, but anyone who researches Frank Dukes knows there's some issues, question marks about his past. Mm -hmm. Chris Myra claims to have 55 fights in Japan, which, you know, is not true. And, uh, you know, I, we fought and he beat me in a great, really great two round fight three and a half years ago. I hadn't, you know, trained at the level that I do now. I'm quite confident that I would beat him, but there's no guarantee just because I get to train with better people and I get to, you know, I work really hard and I'm focused and committed. And he's some guy in Pembroke who trains under Frank Dukes. Doesn't mean he can't win the fight. In fact, of course he can. But I want that back. He agrees to fight me, but this guy's a, a history of pulling out of fights. I mean, judging by right on his own website, it says he had 55 fights when Sherdog has him at one and three, you know, um, and uh, he Ian Daw, a great fighter from the Ottawa area. He pulled out of two fights with him, at least two others that I know of. He's got posters up at his gym of six fights that he pulled out of. I mean, he's that type of guy. And those are the type of guys. If if you're lucky enough to get that fight back, you want it back. And so he agrees to fight. I go into training camp for eight weeks. You know, I stop working at the score on the fight network. My wife goes off to get to um, to uh, Sc- um, Stratford where she works, and I do nothing but train, sleep, and eat. For, and, and one week out from it, the guy has most of his meds in, and one of them needs an extra requirement. And I'm getting calls from the promoter, from the matchmaker, saying he's saying he won't get go get his medical test. He's he's saying that he won't go get you know a follow up test to one thing. And he's humming and hawing and, oh, well, he's too busy and he's got Frank Dukes coming into town to teach a seminar and all this nonsense. So after talking to them, the promoter wants is saying, look, it's, we're not confident this is going to happen. We asked the Quebec Commission if they would work without it. They said no because he needs it to get licensed in Ontario first. And Ontario is very stringent. And they said no. And they said we're not confident he's going to do this. And we want to offer you a fight against this other guy instead. And I look at it, and it's some way tie champion. It's not the fight that I've been training for. And, you know, as much as I was, you know, tempted to take it, I'm not the greatest fighter in the world. And part of how I prepare is preparing for one guy exactly. I'm not going to be the greatest guy. I'm not going to be the best fighter, but I'm going to be prepared for one guy. doesn't work out. So they say, well, forget it. The fight's off. We're not going to put on a fight with this guy. We're going to pull it because he won't get his meds done. And then he starts coming out and saying he has them. To this day, if you call the Ontario uh, Athletic Commission, he is still not licensed for our fight, which was supposed to take place place a month ago. And this guy just shoots his mouth off. It's just so frustrating because I hate this kind of nonsense. I like, you know, grown-ups competing in a sport, but you end up getting tangled up with a can who's, you know, tells stories of 50 fights that don't exist. This is the kind of stuff I guess you should expect. 